evening to all the guests and dignitaries here in this capacity as a host for the worldwide webinar on on healing of mind body and soul through ayurveda so uh, it gives me a great pleasure and extend a warm hello to each and every one of you gathered here today it's a huge honor for us to have someone of this caliber here whose involvement of the topic in topic in healing of mind body soul and through ayurveda and uh, yes so let me give a more uh, quick explanation so ayurveda recognized that true health is harmonious interplay of the body mind and spirit it offers a path to restore balance and vitality in the ancient wisdom of ayurveda healing is a journey inward where the body mind and soul are nurtured as a unified whole ayurveda teaches us that by understanding and balancing a constitution we unlock the body's innate ability to heal itself on all levels so now coming to the uh, di uh, distinguished speaker here uh, dr shilpi sharma so we are very honored to have you here with us ma'am thank you ha so she has done her ba ms uh, diploma in clinical panchkarma ayurvedic doctor and panchkarma specialist international consultant diet and lifestyle coach counselor youtuber podcast and motivational speakers so uh, it's our pleasure to have you here ma'am um, so sems welfare foundation a registered not for profit organization is dedicated to social impact across various sectors we focus on education particularly skill development and entrepreneurship through our initiative digi saksham we have created a training program in it finance retail and entrepreneurship impacting over 6000 individuals we are currently upskilling inmates in haryana jails and collaborating with universities and colleges we have also partnered with banks to place over 1500 candidates in job families another sense initiative empowers women through workshop and stories of successful female entrepreneurs we conduct programs on digital literacy marketing and career development reaching over 1000 women across multiple states this initiative recently reached the milestone of 100 women actively involved in just a short time sems has established itself as a force for positive charge equipping individuals with skills for employment and promoting women leadership in various industries now let me take this wonderful uh, occasion occasion uh, to uh, to our uh, to our distinguished speaker Dr. Shilpi Sharma, ma'am, it's our pleasure to have you, ma'am. So, as you know, uh, as I had already given a brief introduction of ma'am, uh, once again, ah, uh, uh, once again, I welcome you on behalf of Sims, ma'am. Ha, thank, thank you. you for you know, ah, uh, giving your ah uh, time ah uh, time for us. And uh, with this note, I Lakshmi on behalf of. the sense perfect foundation would like to give my heartiest welcome again to dr shilpi sharma ma'am with a huge round of applause for joining us today your presence has added to the significance of this event and we are genuinely honored to have you here with us ma'am yes okay. ma'am now thank over you, to you ma'am for ma wonderful uh, introduction thank you uh, i would You're like welcome, to thank i would like to thank sems uh, foundation for inviting me uh, for this zoom session uh, it's my pleasure to be with all of you wonderful people uh, first of all i would like to introduce myself all uh, although lakshmi already is uh, my name is uh, dr shilpi sharma i am an ayurvedic practitioner and panchkarma specialist i am ayurvedic diet and lifestyle consultant life coach and counselor uh, other than that i am a youtuber podcaster and blogger i have my own pharmaceutical company nitan phytochemical a very big manufacturer ayurvedic medicines uh, i am practicing ayurveda from past 20 years and during this journey i have treated so many patients with metabolic disorders like thyroid diabetes uh, and patients like uh, reproductive disorders like uh, endometriosis pcod uh, menorrhagia and uh, infertility many patients with uh, cervical spondylitis disc prolapse uh, spinal issue uh, some mental disorders like anxiety uh, depression insomnia uh, hypertension so it's a long journey and uh, i'm really glad to uh, convey that uh, that during my journey uh, all these patients are still connected with me uh, because uh, they get a miraculous effect of ayurveda in their life so uh, first of all i would like to introduce ayurveda what is ayurveda 
because being an Indian therapy, people are not aware about Ayurveda. Ayurveda is basically an Indian system of medicine and uh, it's an oldest system of medicine. Uh, it's a 5,000 year old science and ancient wisdom. Uh, actually, Ayurveda is a Sanskrit word which is made up of two words, Ayu and Ved. Ayu means life and Ved means science. It's a science of life. Other than a system of medicine, it's a lifestyle. And the purpose of Ayurveda is prevention of disease rather than treatment. Ayurveda believe that all this universe, every living and non-living thing is made up of five elements. Air, water, fire, earth and ether. All these five elements, when combined together, they form three types of energy. Vat, Pit and Kap. These three energies are called called doshas in Ayurveda because they cause disease. Vat dosh is made up of air and ether and this is called the energy of movement. Everything which is moving in our body, like uh, you can say blinking of eyes, breathing, blood circulation, heartbeat, uh, contraction and relaxation of muscles, everything is because of Vat dosh. Pit dosh is made up of water and fire and this is called the energy of transformation. Uh, pit is like a digestive juice. Uh, it converts food into energy. So it is an energy of transformation. It basically burn all the hormones, our body temperature, our eyesight, uh, metabolism, catabolism. Everything is because of Pit dosha. Kap dosh is made up of water and earth. Uh, this is called energy of inertia. It gives structure to our body our bone, our muscles, it's all because of cup. our bodily fluids like uh, like uh, cerebrospinal fluid in our brain, fluids in our knees, these are all because of cup dosh. Cup basically gives immunity to us, it uh, lubricates our skin. So all these three doshas are present in every one of us, outside of us and inside of us. Have you ever wondered why some people are, some people eat so much but still they are thin? And some people, they don't eat much, but still they are obese. Or some people cannot sit at one place for a minute. And some people can sit for hours at one place. It's all because of your unique body type, which is called genetic blueprint. Ayurveda believe that we all, when uh, Ayurveda believe that when we uh, took birth at that time, one of our dosha become dominant in it, which makes our physiological and psychological makeup. These three elements are present in everyone, which makes three main body type: Vata, dominant uh, body type, Pitta, dominant body type, and Kapha, dominant body type. Other than this, we have seven body types, but these three are main body types. Let us see Vata, dominant person, how they look like. They are very uh, thin because Vata nature is cold, dry, and light, which makes their bone light, which makes their skin right and their extremities are mostly cold so they are either tall or short they are underweight the most difficult task for vata people is gaining weight they have short and they take short and frequent meal they can't take a big meal and they lose energy very fast although they have a high metabolism uh, am i audible yes, yes okay i think there is some issue in bluetooth so uh Basically, jo vata, uh, vata people are very do everything fast. They talk fast, they walk fast, they eat fast, they learn fast and they forget fast. Their memory is not very good. So, uh, if we, if Vata, Pita and Kapha people sit on a dining table, then Vata person will finish their food first. And then Kapha people will finish food last. And a fifth person is a moderate eater. So, uh, but bad person due to light, cold uh, and dry nature, they are very active, very creative, they are alert, restless people. They do multitasking. That's why they lose energy very fast. They need napping in the afternoon because they have very less energy in compared to pith and cuff people. They are mostly artists, musicians, teachers, philosophers and spiritual leaders. Pith dominating person is having pith in dominating in them means fire energy is dominating in them. So these people have problem with heat and sunlight. They have very good appetite because their digestive fire is high. Their metabolism is high. So they can digest anything. The only problem is they do they have a tendency to overeat. So they because of overeating, they uh, basically trigger with dosha. And uh, the symptoms like vomiting, heart birth, burning sensation, acidity uh, start showing up. Their body temperature is high. And uh, the most beautiful thing about this person is that they can easily lose and gain weight. If they keep, put their mind into it, then they can easily lose and gain weight. Mostly these people have medium height and moderate weight. And they do all, all the activities moderate. Their stamina is better than Vatosha. 
but less than cup dosha they are sharp intelligent ambitious passionate confident and motivated they are mostly motivational speakers because they have fiery energy in them which makes them work all it when they have any task to finish they forget about eating or drinking they have just focused on the task they are very good organizers entrepreneur administrator directors pioneers and motivational speakers mostly uh, ceos of company are mostly with the dominating people kapha dominating person is a person which has more quality of water and earth which makes it slow so they have slow metabolism they gain weight easily although they eat less but still they gain weight and most difficult task is reducing weight for them they have big bones big shoulders heavy bones they are mostly obese people they have well developed bodies and they do all the activities slowly like they talk slow they walk slow they eat slow they learn slow and they forget slow. they take time to learn but but once they learn the thing it will remain in ho- remain whole life in their mind uh they basically uh, they are very happy loving kind hearted highly passionate dependable people but they like to live in their comfort zone they are good providers as a profession they are mostly homemakers healers nurses therapists doctors accountants and mostly connected to human resources they have very good stamina they have very good endurance all from all the three doshas kap dosha is the best one what ayurveda thing so uh, these three body types are common but now on days we have mix of these body type like combination body type like vat pit pit kap or vat kap these are more prominent nowadays what is health according to ayurveda ayurveda according to ayurveda health is the balance between three dosha vat pitt and kapha if these three dosha in balance we are healthy if they are imbalanced then we have disease according to the imbalanced dosha so uh, and ayurveda is not only up to for physical fitness it's all about physical mental and spiritual alignment balance between mind body and soul if we are physically and mentally fit only then we can explore other dimension like spirituality so the balance between vatvet kap and mind body soul is health according to ayur so now how an ayurvedic doctor treat a patient when a patient visit to us then we just ask question ask about their detailed medical history we do pulse diagnosis uh, this is called nadi pariksha nadi pariksha in ayurved uh, through this we can find out what is your body type your body type and then which is prakriti and then the disease that is vikriti we find out both from the pulse diagram after that we we ask question like uh, the se- season which is going on the uh, food you are eating the place from where you are coming from because everything matters to us from which country you belong at um, where you were when you are in childhood so there are so many things and your body type the imbalance dosha we should know all then we decide whether we should give herbal medicines or panchkarma therapy panchkarma therapy is basically a process of detoxification and rejuvenation but main purpose of ayurveda or a physician is to balance the dosha if doshas are balanced then everything is fine panchkarma therapy is basically a five five fold therapy it's, it's a five type of action which we do to detox our body it's a cellular detoxification five uh, there are five main procedure but before that there are some pre operative procedure which is called purva karma these are snehanam and swedanam snehanam is of two types like uh, external body massage and internal oliage they give ghee, ghee to patient for drinking before main procedure and we apply oil on the body so that all the dosha from cellular level they uh, reach to the gut and then we expel them from the nearest root according to the in balance dosha like if your cup dosha is then in balance and you are having issues like sinusitis chest congestion asthma then we opt for bhavan therapy bhavan therapy is basically therapeutic emesis in which we give patient uh, ghee for drinking and then we gradually increase it dose and when all the uh, doshas come uh, come into the stomach then we expel them out through the therapeutic ms uh, if the dosha if you are having pit dosha imbalance and you are having issues like skin disease acidity acid reflux uh, ibs and indigestion issue then we opt for virechan that is therapeutic purgation when pit is imbalance then we use virechan therapy when kapha is imbalance then we use vaman therapy but if vata is imbalance then we use basi therapy vata means all the body includes in vata so uh, basti treatment is a kind of medicated enema we use med- medicated oils ghee or decoctions we directly induce them into the large intestine the site of bath is large intestine 
So first we do snehan and swedanam and bring that bath into their into its site and then we directly induce these decoctions and these medicated enema and bring that and expel it out from the body. So these three therapies we cannot do every time. There is a particular season for that. For women, we can uh, do women in April and May. The rechen we can do in September and October. And basi we will we can do in rainy season. Then next is nasim. Nasim is the only therapy which a person can do at home. Otherwise, all these therapies one should do under the supervision of an Ayurvedic doctor. Nasim is basically nasal drop. Medicated oil or ghee we instill on each nostril because uh, nose is the doorway of brain. So if you have any issue above the clavicle bone, like you have uh, hair fall or premature brain of hair or you have some eyesight issue or ear pain or sinuses, allergic rhinitis or you have deviated nasal septum or anything related to upper part, then Nasem is the best medicine for it. Nasem is the best treatment for it. So next is Rakt Mokshan. Rakt Mokshan is bloodletting. Uh, it's mostly Rakt Mokshan is used in Pitta Dosha. When Pitta Dosha is imbalanced or we have impure blood or when we have skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, urticaria, leukoderma or uh, acne. In that case, we use rakt motion. We can directly uh, blood, do blood letting from the vein or we can use cupping or uh, for removing impure blood from the body. This process will balance with that. After all these processes, we, there is a post-operative procedure. Post-operative uh, procedure is for improving digestion. This is called sunsurgeon prep, which means uh, when we are in a panchkarma therapy, then our digestive power fire becomes weak. So uh, we slowly give liquidite, then semi-solidite, and then solidite. Then the digestion uh, fire will come back. Like bath, pit, and cuff body type, Ayurveda divided our whole day into uh, six energy clocks of four hours. And every uh, energy clock has a different activities <coughs> assigned to them. So uh, let's start with bath energy clock, which is 2 a.m. to 6 a.m., which is called Brahmura. So Ayurveda advised to wake up in Brahmura. Why? Because it's a quiet time with no distraction. It's a time of creativity because it's a bath time. Bath means creativity. All the mental work, all study, meditation, affirmation, and Brahmya. People who want to get Siddhi, who want to get Brahmagyan and who want to meditate. For them, this is the best time. If a uh, student want to do studies, then rather than uh, at night 10 to 2 p.m., 2 a.m., rather than this time is best for them. Because now nowadays, uh, students are studying at night time between 10 to uh, 2 a.m. So uh, that time is Pitta time. And this is the Vata time. This is best for study. Because if, if you learn something during this time, it will go into your long term memory and you will not forget it. Our body is, because our body is done with the process of digestion and getting ready for elimination. So one should wake up one and a half hour before the sunrise. We should follow the circadian rhythm. Circadian rhythm is a cycle. Our body cycle when matched with the nature cycle. When both are in sync, then we don't have any disease. There are very less chances of any disease because we are connecting with the nature. We are in sync with the nature. So one should rise with the sun and set with the sun. Next clock is Kapha energy clock, which is 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. This is a time which allow us to prepare for the day, nourish our body and gather energy to go to work. It, this time has maximum endurance because it is Kapha time. So this is the best time for doing exercise. Most people wake up late and they do exercise after 10 p.m. And that is a Pitta timing which aggravates it. So this is the right time for doing exercise. Start your day with 1 to 2 glass of lukewarm water to activate your digestive fire because, because after 8 hour long sleep your dig digestive fire is slow. So we activate them by drinking lukewarm water or uh, detoxifying our body. Do not miss the period between 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. Why? Because colon become active and now in the process of elimination if you skip that period then digestive fire become active and body needs some nourishment. The uh, elimination part will skip and people have constipation issue. If you are not waking up between 5 p.m. to 7 a.m. First, watch your tongue. If it is coated, then you need to clean your tongue because your gut is having problems. So you can do brush and scrap your tongue. Then do oil pulling. Oil pulling is for maintaining oral health. We can use mustard oil, sesame oil or coconut oil. Take one tablespoon of oil and three tablespoons of palm water. Mix it and hold it in the mouth for five to ten minutes. It will clear all the bacteria from the mouth. And then do 
gargles with warm water. Then nasim, which I have already told you. We use anutel in nasim. One can use anutel. Anybody can use anutel. And uh, anutel basically start with one drop in each nostril. Then gradually increase it to two, three, four, five, six drops. You can do it twice. The precaution you keep it in your mind is that do nasim before having food, before bath, before uh, washing your head, hair. Uh, do not uh, practice it during cloudy day, during rainy season, and don't go directly into air after doing nursing. Best time to wake up is 5 to 6 a.m. Uh, I told you why. One of my patients, uh, she approached me for uh, sleepiness whole day, lethargy, and she can't able to wake up in the morning. She was preparing for UPSC exam. And then I just give a simple tip, no medicine, no therapy, and she become okay. Uh, I just told her to... Uh, set your alarm at 5.30 a.m. and no other alarm. Just wake up before 6 a.m. in bath time. And she practiced it for one week and she will be okay. Actually, when we wake up before 6 a.m., then we become feel energetic and light folding. But when we wake up after 6 a.m., that is our comfort time. So we started feeling lethargic. It's a time of deep sleep. If you sleep during 6 a.m., you will sleep up to 10 p.m. Then it is with the energy clock. With the energy clock is 10 a.m. To 2 p.m. Uh, because it is fifth energy clock, that is fire energy is activated at this time. So during this time, sun is at peak, digestive fire is at peak, and this is our time for main meal of the day. That is lunch. I believe in two meals of the day: lunch and dinner. I don't believe in breakfast. If you want to take something, you can take fruits or vegetable juices or nuts during the breakfast. Lunch is the main meal of the day because this time with the fifth become active. You can start lunch with steamed salad. It will alkalize your body and helps you to reduce insulin spike. After one and a half hour, take probiotic post-lunch, uh, which includes buttermilk, which is good for IBS and piles patient. And uh, you can take kombucha, you can take sauerkraut or kanji after lunch. Because it's pitta time, it's action time. So plan your work, organize and take action. And I've already told you, there should be no workout during this time. Because it aggravates pit and then you have symptoms of pit during this time. Then next is bath energy clock. That is 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, because bath energy is activated, that means movement of thoughts, ideas and creativity. It's a creative time. The best time for call for meetings, strategize, brainstorm, solve problems, communication and socialize. That's why I arranged this meeting during this time. It is a time for communication, for socialize, for new ideas. And this is a time for evening snack. Why? Because if you are taking snack in this time, you will not take a big meal during the day. So you need something to eat or in this time. So evening snack, you can take uh, seasonal fruit. You can take nuts, roasted seeds, granola bar or homemade lunch. Then next is kapha energy clock, which is 6 to 10 p.m. Because kapha energy is dominating in this period, that means your body is getting heavy and it's time to slow down. And it's time for smallest meal of the day, that is dinner. For dinner, you should take dinner before sunset and dinner should include no grains. Try to take uh, steamed vegetables or khichdi, especially moong dal khichdi. And uh, you can take vegetable soup, you can take rice plus dal, rice with dal, you can take um, you can take millets as well, dalia. But try to avoid roti. Try to avoid uh, breads. Try to avoid all the deep fried baked items at this time. And ensure that you should sleep three hours before. Uh, you should take dinner three hours before sleep because you should not sleep with undigested food in your gut because then it goes to the large intestine. It start fermentating there. It start putrefying and then there is a bad bacteria and worms over there and uh, then you will start having issues like acid reflux, sleep apnea, breathing disorders at night. So one should keep three hours gap between dinner and sleep and two hours gap between water and sleep so that you should not wake up in the middle of the night for and one hour gap between gadgets and sleep because when we see the blue screen, it, we can, it, our mind cannot recognize whether it is a daytime or night. It interferes with us. So there must be, you can read a book at that time. Best time of sleep is 10 to 11 p.m. <coughs> because uh, 10 to 11 p.m. is the time of kapha energy. <clears throat> if you uh, sleep after 11 p.m., then you will you won't be able to sleep up to 2 o'clock because that is a fifth time. Most of students do study at that time because they 
start waking up at that time they were they are not able to sleep fifth energy clock is between 10 pm to 2 am because liver become active during this time this is a time for detoxification <coughs> uh liver because liver liver is done with the digestion now it's time for repair it's time to for healing and repair it's a time for deep rem rapid eye movement your brain put you on sleep so that it can work on your body so don't skip sleep between 10 to 2 m because melatonin is produced during this time melatonin hormone basically activate our pineal glands our third eye and it helps it helps in stimulating human growth hormone which is active during this time which helps in burning fat collagen repair improve bone density enhance immunity repair cells and anti inflammatory action <coughs> so sleeping late trigger metabolic fire which cause midnight hunger cravings and bad effect on our immune so try to sleep between 10 to 11 pm let's talk about some ayurvedic health tips ayurved is basically uh, talk about wrong combination of food uh, we do this we practice this on daily basis most of the people uh, must take i think fruits and uh, fruit cream and mango shake banana shake and other milk shakes according to ayurveda this is a wrong combination fruits have active acid and dairy has lactic acid both are not compatible with each other so we should not take dairy with the fruit because it curdles in our stomach and then cause ibs then it cause leaky gut which uh, cause issues for the gut issue fruits it should not be combined with other foods like vegetables grains and meat because fruit take one hour in stomach then one hour in small intestine and one hour in large intestine and vegetables take two hours in each uh, part and grains take three hours in digestion in stomach Three hours in small intestine and three hours in large intestine and meat take almost 72 hours for digestion so every food have different uh, time of digestion so we should not combine them because one thing will digest fast and it will carry other food undigested food along with it and then cause disease gut issue we should not combine milk with salt do you know this combination cause leukoderma white patches in our body milk and salt we mostly take prathas with milk or milk tea or we mostly take salty snacks with milk tea this is a wrong combination we should not take milk with curd or yogurt because both are at different metabolic process have different complex protein which are not compatible with each other we should avoid milk with fish and meat curd with fruits and vegetables mostly we take curd with lots of fruits and veggies hot and cold food ghee with honey if we take equal quantity of ghee with equal quantity of honey it cause instant death so we should not mix both of them or at least if you want to mix then mix them uneven we should avoid curd at night you can take curd in the morning or in the afternoon but avoid it at night because it blocks all the uh, channels in our body and cause heaviness increase mucus cough cough cold issues sinusitis and most important thing is never eat honey because honey is a medicine it's not food uh, nowadays we are uh, seeing lots of packed food right, right, written honey on it so we should avoid those food because when honey is heated it will be a toxin which cause food poisoning in our body so never eat honey uh, some people have practices like putting honey in you in hot water one should not do it just make the water lukewarm then you can eat honey these are some combination which is good according to i fruits with nuts is a good combination although it helps in reducing insulin spike in the body fruits uh, nuts are basically dry fruits with plant based milk both have from the same family so they are compatible with only mango milk shake is good for you because mango have heating property milk has cooling property so both combined with each other and it does not affect the digestive fire but the only thing uh, keep in mind is that mango should be dry don't use unripe milk avocado and milk is okay it helps in gaining weight milk with ghee is okay for constipation milk with turmeric is okay for increasing immunity milk with nutmeg is okay for inducing sleep milk with dry nuts is okay for uh, improving stamina curd and yogurt you can combine carrots beetroot cucumber and some spices like black pepper cumin cilantro in your curd and buttermilk is good buttermilk is basically a diluted curd so it it doesn't uh, ferment further in your gut so buttermilk is good and it is a uh, best food for ibs and piles fish ayurveda is not only uh, for physical health it works on mental health as well because uh, according to ayurveda uh, healthy person is the person who has its mind body and soul in alignment so ayurveda believe that disease first manages 
manifest itself in mind and then in what so i've treated so many patients of rheumatoid arthritis these people are mostly having a mindset and they are usually uh, having self talk like they have a suicidal thought they want to destroy their body so because of that mindset they create a disease an autoimmune disease which is again trying to uh, your immune system system is working against your body so it's your mindset which is creating disease you can heal if you can heal your subconscious mind if, if you can heal your you program your subconscious mind then your body start healing it the first thing is release your suppressed emotion because it causes disease most of the people who have anger issues they have fatty liver or fatty liver further cause thyroid hypothyroid so release those anger sit with the anger whenever you have some emotion come out of you that wants to show you that release me i'm here to show you that please release me don't suppress me if you have greed issue then people have asthma and allergy if you have too much responsibility you are doing everything yourself then there is a issue with cervical spine and self destructive thoughts called autoimmune disorders if you have fear and anxiety then you have kidney stones you have frequent micturition lack of flexibility cause knee pain and if you hold grudges against someone then you have constipation if you don't have if you don't let go of things then there is a constant so see how our mental health affect our physical health and there is a connection between our gut and the brain our gut is the second brain so they are constantly communicating with each other when we eat food and uh, with phone so the communication breaks so there is a problem in digestion so when you are eating food sit with the food uh, just it is called a kind of meditation when you come into present moment sit with the food feel the aroma feel the taste and just be with it so that it can easily be digested and you can get full result and you can feel when you are satiated so how you can improve your mental health through meditation meditation bring you in the present moment meditation help you to disidentify yourself from your body because it makes you aware that you are not body you are not mind you are not thoughts feelings emotions you are an observer a non doer and we started feeling guilty if you are we are not doing anything if you are free for uh, an hour or so we start feeling guilty that we are wasting our time but we have to practice some time being an observer and non doer at that time we release we come out of that uh, fight and flight mode so it's always doing doing to when you take a pause be still then you surrender to the divine and try to forget past past is already past present is gift and future we don't know it's unknown so it's better to don't go to past again and again because you will feel same kind of energy when you visit that incident in past and you release all those chemicals again which you have released at that time and you will experience those experience again because you bringing them in your present as well do not victimize yourself because universe always increase whatever you focus on if you started victimizing yourself and then universe give you more opportunity to victimize you try to do gratitude prayer so that whatever you are thanking for universe will start increasing it because now you are connecting with the divine you are surrendering yourself you can ground yourself by connecting with nature walking barefoot on the grass go near to a water body just take a walk outside it will help you to connect with the mother nature and it will ground you you can write a journal it will help you to vomit all the negative thoughts and sleep is definitely it is the most important part because we think 60000 thought in and all thought are all those thoughts are not important so how we can delete it from our mind through sleep it's a natural process and through meditation we release thought those thoughts and make a place for fresh thought for new download so if you are thinking same thing again and again you are not getting any creative idea that is because your mind is full so you need to delete all these thoughts so that new thoughts can take can come and new downloads can happen and you can create new things if you want to know about ayurveda or about your body type you can visit to my website www.nitanpanchkarma.com and you can click on the quiz know your dosha from there you can find out a questionnaire after that you find your uh, body type and then you can go to my youtube channel you can find videos over there about your body type what you should eat what you should avoid what type of your lifestyle lifestyle should be you can get it from there or there are so many videos on internet and so many quizzes on internet after solving them you can find out who you are just think if you know your body type how easy 
it would it would be to make a choice about your diet and lifestyle and if you want to know more about ayurveda you can connect with me on all these social media platforms i think uh, this is the end of the session and if somebody want to ask any question then please you can write down in the chat box if somebody want to ask any question ah. please write down there yeah uh, yes ma'am actually uh, thank you for such a nice session there are few questions asked here so um one one of them is asking us can you please tell us about some food combination that should be avoided which i have already told you uh, like dairy with uh, fruits and fruits with other uh, cereals and meat and veggies curd with veggies mm -hmm. i have told you all food combination okay. you can screenshot them i'll show you the slide okay so next one is having fermented food daily is good for health uh, it depends on your body type if you are pith body type then fermented food is not meant for you and uh, one should avoid fermented food in rainy season otherwise one can take uh, fermented food because if it is a probiotic because it helps in our gut bacteria okay uh, so thank you ma'am uh, one more is uh, are there specific ayurvedic practices or routines that can help reduce daily stress and improve mental well being hmm, yes which i have already told you about uh, meditation uh, ayurveda have has so hum meditation so hum means being in present when, when we inhale it is so and when we exhale it is hum right so this is the sound of our breath just focus on your breath and just keep there whatever thoughts are coming into your mind just let it come and let it go i am practicing uh, meditation from past 20 years so during this period what i have learned that we are in this lifetime we are uh, we are a human body we are in a human body right and human body we are here to experience all the experiences which a human can be good bad or ugly but we should not attach with them we are here to experience them but don't attach with them just be an observer watch it and let it go this kind mm -hmm. of practices is called soha meditation you are in a present moment and otherwise if you are taking a good sleep that is okay if you are doing pranayam through pranayam your right and left both brain become active because our right nostril is a solar energy our left nostril is a lunar energy so we have both feminine and masculine energy we don't need anybody to complete us we are already complete shiv and shakti is inside of us so when we breathe through right nostril our left brain become active when we breathe through left nostril our right brain become active so if we do uh, anulom vilom pranayam or nadi shuddhi pranayam so this we can activate 72000 nadis energy pathways in our body so it is very important to do pranayam because as we age our lung capacity start diminishing so if we practice pranayam on daily basis then we can improve our lung capacity then we can uh, activate our both brain left and right and we can uh, we can balance our masculine and feminine energy okay ha thank you ma'am uh, next one is having fruits at night after dinner is it good no it is not good because uh, your dinner is having grains and veggies and fruits uh, digest in one hour and grains take twice a time veggies take twice a time and grains take thrice a time if you take uh, fruit after dinner what happens your fruit digest will digest fast and then your it will take undigested grains along with it into the intestine and then there is a putrefaction there is a fermentation and then there is bloating uh, then there is worms infestation it's all because of that okay thank you ma'am next one how can busy professionals incorporate ayurvedic principles into their fast paced lives <clears throat> by following ayurvedic energy clocks waking up in brahmura doing all the practices first work on your mental health because uh, when uh, as soon as we wake up at that time cortisol hormone which is called stress hormone start activating in our body so what we do we take more stimulant like tea and coffee empty stomach it will make the condition worse our cortisol start increasing more but if we do meditation at that time it will calm down that cortisol hormone if we start doing exercises it will help it will use that cortisol hormone so if you do uh, if you follow uh, all activities according to the clock then we can remain healthy although in this fast paced life fast paced life so having probiotic can help reduce skin problem yes probiotic help in skin problem but uh, already the person who is having skin problem has a pitta imbalance their pitt dosha is already imbalanced so they first need to balance that pitt dosha and then it don't provide in the diet by doing rakta mokshana 
or village what advice would you give to someone uh, new to ayurveda who is looking to improve their mental well being okay then ayurvedic practitioner help them uh, doing shirodhara Shirodhara is a therapy. Some people, uh, actually, uh, Ayurveda textbook, some uh, textbooks that there are five uh, Panchkarma therapists, they don't include Shirodhara, but some textbook include Shirodhara as a Panchkarma. So, Shirodhara is a practice where we drop oil uh, on our third eye point, on our Brahmarandra, uh, so that our electric waves convert into magnetic waves and patients start feeling, feeling relaxed. Before that, we do aura cleansing. Through that, you will enter into a stage of thoughtlessness for some time, which will help you to release that mental stress. And there are some supplements as well, like Ashwagandha, Brahmi, Shantushpi, which will help you to calm down or uh, which is which will improve your mental. Thank you. Uh, what do you think, gym is better or pranayam? I think you have answered this. Pranayam is better. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Pranayam yes. is better. Gym is okay. Uh-huh. One should do uh, one should do weight training. Which is very important because as we age, our muscles start weakening, start degenerating. So at that time, we can understand the importance of our muscles. Hmm. So when you start doing uh, weight training, both male and female should do weight training uh, initially uh, once in a week and then two times a week. It will help you in uh, making lean muscle mass and uh, maintaining weight and your sugar spike. But cardio, in cardio, uh, cardio is also good, but this should be for once in a week or twice in a week, not more than that. Meditation and pranayama is much better because it will slow down your heart rate. It will keep you calm or it will increase your lung capacity. Okay, I think you have answered the other one also in the next one. Uh, so, what are some effective Ayurvedic remedies for improving? This also you answered, improving sleep quality. Oh. Uh, so, the next one is, uh, if we take heavy meal and and after that drink milk at night uh, is it good for health no because it will take 3 hours to digest your meal and milk is already heavy in nature so if you take milk after heavy meal it is not good for health but if you keep 3 hours difference and you if you take light meal and you take you drink milk at night then it is okay ayurveda recommend drinking milk especially buffalo milk before sleep because it induces food and i will advise taking a glass of water before sleep because it will um, reduce the chances of cardiac arrest because most of the cardiac arrest are because of dehydration but not take any uh, drink after heavy meal or uh, don't do any exercise after taking heavy meal. okay no so next one is there any uh, restrictions is there any restriction that impact your food choices um i've told you about all the food combinations and uh, some things like if you keep a dis- difference of 3 hours between two meals and uh, don't do exercise after having meal uh, and uh, take time to digest one meal then go for another meal okay. there is a difference of 3 hours between sleep and the meal okay. and uh, there are wrong you. combination of food yeah okay thank you ma'am so next one is two vitiligo occurs due to wrong food combination is it the myth yes vitiligo occurs due to wrong combination of food ha huh, they are Absolutely asking is it right. the myth or it's no better. it's not a myth it's absolutely true i told you when we milk we take milk with salt or we take wrong combination of food most of the time we take shahi paneer with uh, uh, with dairy and salt into it it cause vitiligo in long term okay uh, why do mouth ulcer occur because of increased pit in body and sometimes due to deficiency of vitamin b12 because vegetarians don't have vitamin 12 in their food so, so if you want food? to add b12 in their food for vegetarians you can add uh, raisins while uh, setting curd you can add raisins and then but when it is prepared then you can have that uh, curd and it will increase your b12 okay. or we have b12 in kanji uh, and uh, in spices uh, like pickles haskar uh, especially vegetable pickles okay so next one is what are effective strategies to maintain focus and reduce distractions during meditation there is no strategy for that because mm-hmm. when we are doing meditation we are watching our mind and my, our mind is always in the past or in the future it will always bring your attention to the past and to the future you will uh, always in past or future and with mind uh, there is multiple thoughts so your purpose is not to focus it. your purpose is not to give yourself some work to do your purpose for meditation is just uh, become observer of whatever comes in front of you whether it is thoughts whether it is emotions whatever is coming let them come and let them go 
Don't bring your attention to them. Just be in your cell and be in the present. Let mind do whatever it want to do. You are not your mind. So, uh, next one, having curd at breakfast at morning is beneficial. Yes, you can take curd at in breakfast and in afternoon as well. But avoid it in rainy season and spring season. Okay, ma'am. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. Um, so can I just request, uh, is there any more questions from the audience side? If there is, uh, I would request the person who has question to please unmute yourself and uh, ask the same. Ma'am. Yes, Anjali. Yeah, okay. you can please ask. Ma'am, I have one question. Ma'am, do uh, face, acne or pimple uh, directly give this, like directly, uh, like it is related to the stomach problem or it is just occur because of air pollution and all? Uh, there are so many reasons for acne. Uh, it's because of hormonal changes which is happening in our body. It's because of constipation. It's because of our gut issue, IBS, because of pith imbalance in our body. Pith is, all, uh, pith is related to hormones as well. Pith is related to digestive system as well. If our gut, we have bad gut bacteria, even then we have. If we are taking uh, deep fried food, uh, salty food, processed food, junk food, then we have acne. It depends on at which place acne is placed on your face. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, I wanted to know that uh, how, if if someone has got vitiligo, then how to heal from it? Like, if I'm not sure about what wrong food com uh, combination that he has consumed. So, like, now that the process is already done, then how to heal from it? Through Ayurvedic medicines and Panch Karma therapy. It will help you to uh, to detox your body. After detoxification, uh, you can, your medicine will work much better. It will become more effective. Ma'am, is it like totally curable? Yes, it is curable. Ma'am, okay. I have a thank you. These are the wrong combination of food. You can screenshot. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. And these are the right combination of food. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, so once again, once again, I express my great uh, gratitude and thanks to uh, Dr. Shilpi Sharma, ma'am for sparing her a uh, hectic schedule to impart information to us. We are speechless by your invaluable presence at this session. You have provided in-depth analysis of the subject and shared some fascinating information. We shall bide our time for further such workshops in order to advance both our personal and collective knowledge. Additionally, I would want to thank everyone in the attentive audience for the smart questions and active environment, uh, involvement. This uh, event is considerably more meaningful because of your participation. A good event never ends in the world. They take only a pause and keep us awaiting for the next. All good things eventually end. I consider everyone as fortunate that they became a part of this workshop which was full of knowledge which makes us difficult to say a goodbye. Uh, again, thank you all for attending today's webinar and if you have additional uh, questions, you can contact us by email or telephone. We are happy to support you who here.